So everybody that's fished small mountain streams knows that one of the best places to find fish is right after or right before a down log. Missing that means you're missing those habitat features that are important to fish, like the pools, like the spawning gravels. And even some of the leaf pack will get stuck in these, in these aggregates of wood. That's beneficial to the microorganisms. So we all know the bugs are the reason the trout are there. If you can increase the bug numbers, you're gonna have better trout and trout fishing. So we're out here today working with Trout Unlimited to try to uh, restore stream habitat in Sugar Coat Creek. Uh, specifically, what we're looking to do is restore large wood component that's been missing from the system for probably over 100 years. You've probably seen pictures where there's, you know, areas with completely deforested. Historically, this land before the Forest Service acquired it in the early 19th century, was clear cut and logged and burned repeatedly. This program is about replacing uh, wood material that would have been here historically in streams creating habitat for trout. And it's now missing um, because of historic land use practices. As a result, a lot of the wood that would have naturally fallen in on its own was removed from the system completely. Strategic wood loading projects are actually pretty interesting in, in how they take shape on the landscape. So in Cherokee National Forest, again, we're working with uh, the National Forest staff, volunteers, as well as our TU staff to go out and survey streams. Then we go out as a team and we start setting up, okay, how are we gonna load this? How many pieces need to go in? You bring your crew out and their job is to cut the trees down make sure they're getting into the streams, and that's what's going to, over the long period of time, help the, the way the water flows influence the habitat. I've probably been coming up to this area for 18 years, I would say. Um, and probably the first 14 years of it, I was just mainly staying on the main teleco, spin fishing, bait fishing with everyone else, you know. I hear thousands of stories of my grandfather brought me up to Green Cove. We learned to trout fish. About five years ago, I guess I got into fly fishing um, and started hitting some of these wild streams. Something just kind of changes when you step in the water. Uh, you notice things interact with each other. So that kind of got me into more of the conservation side of it, I guess you would say. The strategic wood loading is actually helping Mother Nature along and creating these wood structures that create habitat for a better population and a healthier population of Southern Appalachian brook trout. The more we can do this, especially in the headwaters, if we can get water into the floodplain instead of just rocketing downstream into the next big river, uh, we're actually doing some flood resiliency there as well. We start in the headwaters, but the effects trickle down all the way, even, even to your water at your house. Sometimes folks look at something short term, right? And, and after we're done and after the guys are done up there, it could look a little messy. But when you give it a few years to start to work, it's going to settle in, it's going to have a natural feel, and hopefully be forming dam pools and scour pools below those structures where you're going to find fish to catch. Uh, we worked with the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency and the Tennessee Aquarium to grab brood stock from another stream, raise them at the aquarium, and re-release them into the, in the Sugar Cove Creek. Initially going through and doing some electrofishing, the fish are looking good and they're looking healthy in the stream. Being able to see new life in what was once a dead stream is so encouraging to me for many reasons, not just because I love to fish, but because that's a sign of what we're doing is working. The bottom line uh, here is wood is good. Wood is necessary in a forested stream. And what we're doing is just trying to hit the reset button and accelerate the process that can't naturally occur in the forest state that we have. And so once we get done with these projects, we can walk away, let the forest continue to grow, and then start to fall in on the road.